Good morning, afternoon, or evening, wherever and whenever you are. My name is Ben, and welcome to our Godot 3 tutorial for our platform series. This is going to be part 3 in this series, and in this video I'm going to show you how to do smooth movement for our character. Uh, let me run a quick example project here so I can show you what it's going to look like. Um, so our character will have a, a smooth movement with a little bit of an acceleration and a friction. And then um, the friction in the air will be less than the friction on the ground. So you can see he slows down in the air slower. And we'll have a quick falling uh, sprite for our character as well to kind of add a little bit to the jump. And then we'll also have, uh, if he gets too close to an edge, he'll slip off like that. So that our character can't just kind of stand, float on air a little bit. So the first thing I want to address is in the last video, a lot of you have had issues with your tiles and the collision boxes being too big on the tiles. So one thing to remember with tiles is that scaling does not work very well with tiles. So you don't want to mess with the scale of anything. And I, what I noticed was that um, in some of the example projects you guys sent me, the, the, your tiles had some, some scaling that was accidentally applied. This generally happens when you're trying to modify your uh, collision shape, you accidentally grab the outside and scale it. So just if you're having issues with this, make sure that the scale on your collision shape and your static body, where's my transform, and your static body and your sprite, make sure the scale on all of these is equal to 1-1. One, one. You don't want the scale to be different on any of these. So double check that if you're having issues with that and um, don't save, we don't need to save that. Uh, you can, if you're, if you're wanting to check where your collisions are during the game, um, you come up to debug here and then just click visible collision shapes and then when you run the game, you should be able to see all your collision shapes and this will help you to see if there's an issue. So if, you're, if your character's floating above the ground or something, uh, you'll want to double check all your scaling and show show your collision shapes in the debugger to kind of see what's going on there. Okay, let's start with our smooth movement. So the first thing we're going to do for our smooth movement is add an acceleration. So we'll come right here, we'll create a new const. We'll call it acceleration. And we'll set it equal to 50. Okay. Now, instead of, instead of setting our motion equal to our speed, let's actually change this to max speed, max underscore speed. We're going to do motion plus equals acceleration or motion minus equals acceleration. And what plus equals and minus equals will do is similar to our gravity right here, it's going to subtract or add our acceleration every single frame from our motion. Okay? And if we run this, you'll be able to see that this works. However, we don't have a max speed. We're not, we're, our character can speed up infinitely. Looks like the flash. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's kind of cool. So w what we want to do here is we want to make sure that our motion never gets faster than our acceleration or than our max speed. Now you could do if motion.x is greater than max speed motion.x equals max speed. You could do this right here and this isn't a bad solution actually, but there's an easier way to do this. And the way we can do it is using the min function. So we'll say motion.x equals motion.x, oh, sorry, min motion.x max speed. So what does the min function do? Well, the min function 
returns the smallest of these two things. So if our motion right here is larger than the max speed, then we're going to set our motion right here equal to the smaller of these two, which would be the max speed because this would be f larger. So then we'll set it equal to the max speed. However, if our motion is less than the max speed, then we're just setting the motion back equal to itself again. So uh, it basically doesn't do anything. This says don't do anything if our motion is less than our max speed, but if our motion is greater than our max speed, set it equal to the max speed. So it's like the if statement, but it's, it's in one line of code and quite a bit easier. Now, the very, uh, I would say, clever of you guys are going to notice that we don't actually need this line anymore because we can just, instead of having motion right here, we can do plus acceleration right here like that and then remove this whole line. So then we get motion is equal to either our motion plus our acceleration if this is smaller than the max speed or if it's not then we set it equal to our max speed. And now we can do the same thing for our motion y. The only difference is we're going to be using motion or sorry our motion x in going left. So motion x is equal to max. Now we need to use the max because this is going to be a negative value. So motion dot x minus acceleration and max speed. Oh, negative max speed. Negative max speed. There we go. And that should um, prevent us from moving too fast. Now let's do our friction. So right here we have motion dot x equals zero. I'm going to do the easy way to do friction, which is just to use a linear interpolation. Uh, and so a linear interpolation, I'll kind of show you how that works. But we'll just say motion dot x equals lerp motion Okay, so then it gives us this information. So it's a, a from, a to, and a weight. So the from is going to say be where are we coming from? Well, our current motion dot x is where we're coming from. Where are we going to? Well, we want to go to zero because this is a friction. So we're going from our current speed all the way down to zero. And then the weight should be a value between zero and one and it's going to represent the percentage that we slow down every frame. And I think I did two for this, so 0 0.2, which is 20%. So we're gonna slow down by 20% every single frame of the game. Now if we run it, we've got a nice movement here. It doesn't feel very good in the air though because of how fast we slow down. At least I personally think it doesn't feel very good. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a variable up here inside of our physics process. So we'll just call this var friction and we'll set it equal to false. Okay. Then what we'll do is instead of having our motion.x equals lerp right here, right here we'll just say friction equals true. Okay, then we can check here. If we're on the floor, we can say if friction equals true, then we just copy this right here. So if we're on the floor, paste that right there. So we'll set friction to true right here. And then if we're on the floor, if friction is equal to true, we want to set our friction to 0 0.02 like this, okay? Else, the else is when we're in the air, right? If we're in the air, and if friction is equal to true, we're gonna set this to 0 0.05. So in the air, we're gonna have way less friction. 
So let's try it and see how it works. There you go. You can see now we slow down quite a bit fast or slower in the air. We do have a friction, but it's just slower. Cool. Now let's create our falling. So come into our player and click on the sprite and click on our frames right here. And we're going to create a new animation. We'll name it fall. We'll come up to our sprites into player and drag over jump three is the one I'm going to use. Okay. Save. Oops, got to wait just a second. Save. Then come back into our script. I'm just going to click on our player and then the player script right here. Inside of here, we just need to, instead of just setting our sprite equal to jump right here, we're going to say if motion.y is less than zero. So if our motion dot y is less than zero, that means our, our y motion is positive or er, is negative, which would be going up. Then we'll set the sprite equal to jump. Else our motion would be positive, which would mean we're going down. Sprite dot play fall. And we'll run the game. And now we should see when we're going down, our character switches to the falling sprite, which just adds a little bit of polish to that. It's not a lot, but it looks quite a bit better. Okay, let's come back into our world. We'll click 2D up here. And we're going to add some, some platforms a little bit here. So I'm just going to do, I'm going to do one maybe about here. And this isn't going to be one that they can go under. So I'm just going to do it like this and come right level with the ground like this. There we go. And you know, it'd kind of be fun to try and put one up here too that they can go under. I don't know if they'll even be able to reach this platform, but I want to do one up here anyways. Okay. Now we'll run the game, and we should be able to, can't reach that one yet, but that's okay. So this issue right here, notice how if I'm careful enough, I can move clear over to here and the character still stands on this ledge right here, kind of floats above the ledge, right? So that doesn't look very good. And a lot of older games have this, so it's not a super big deal. You could just shrink your character's collision shape. If we come into the player and zoom in, you could just shrink the collision shape to match the feet, but then your character's head would be able to go into the walls a little bit. You know, and, and there's lots of solutions to this. Maybe that's not a big deal for you. Maybe you don't mind your character kind of going into the walls just a tad. However, there is another solution that we can do inside of Godot, which is we can use a capsule shape for our character inst instead of a box shape. And this is becoming more and more common, especially in modern games, to use capsule shapes instead of box shapes. Uh, so I'm going to show you how we can do that. We can click on our collision shape right here. And for shape, we're going to click right here on this little down arrow and do new capsule shape 2D. And that's gonna give us a new capsule shape. Now, if we click on that shape, we'll see its radius and height. And I meant click over here, not click right here. Um, you'll see its radius and height. So we wanna set its radius to 14 and its height to 28. And that should give us a pretty good approximation of our character right there. Okay. Now when we go into the game, instead of having our character float on the edge there, he's going to slide off. 
So as we get close to the ledge there, he's going to start to slide off and fall off. And this makes a lot more sense than floating above the ledge there. So I think we're looking pretty good for this video. I think that's going to be all. I'm going to be showing you guys how to do um, camera movement in the next video. And I'm going to be showing you guys how to do uh, movement between rooms. So like how to complete a level. We'll, ha we'll design a couple levels and set a way to complete a level and move on to the next one. And we'll, we'll start to do like, that's a, that would be a good, after that it would be good to introduce health and stuff because then I could show you how to make it so that your health is persistent between all the levels and doesn't reset with each new level. Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope you're enjoying this series. If you are, give it a thumbs up and I will talk to you guys later.